Hello there and welcome to a new video for Age of Wonders 4. In this one I will go over the Age of Tomes mod by Eric DB. This is a wonderful mod that includes currently 6 new tomes, 4 for tier 1, 2 for tier 2, but the author plans to do more tomes in the future so I will also do more videos in the future when we have more tomes added into this thing. So for this one we're going to go over the 6 that we have available. Timestamps are down below. I will talk about the contents and what I personally think about them. Before I get into the meat and uh, potatoes of this whole thing, I want to point out at the beginning of this video that I like this mod for its internal balance and its synergy with what's already around there. It also includes a lot of interesting new game mechanics, but let's get started. The Tome of Astrology is the first one that I'm going to talk about. So it includes a new form of buffing, so-called aligning. This increases the damage of your criticals and you get some extra morale on that. So you can have that three times stacked on you and this is the major backbone of the whole astrology thing here. It also includes a new form of buffs, which are time delayed, so called predictions. So here, for example, Augury of Aid gives us a spell that starts the battle with a aid prediction. So that means two turns pass and then an allied astral wisp is summoned to somebody on your army. This is in so far interesting as many combats really get flowing after two turns, so these things give you a nice start. For example, here a free throwaway unit where you don't know where it will be positioned. But since it's a sustained world spell, it's something that I totally can't recommend you to pick up. Omen of Respite is a in combat spell which gives you the ability to align three of your units and the respite prediction will be a healing effect for every aligned unit and a purge for every aligned unit so as you might already notice being aligned is a big bonus in this book the astrologer is your supporter of this book he has a fairly okay standard attack for a tier 2 unit, unit, nothing special. The prediction of fortune though is really interesting as it can align a unit and increases the critical damage by a, or the critical chance by a substantial amount. 3 fortune is really a lot and this way you can buff up time delayed one of your major damage dealers right at the beginning of the fight. This is not too crazy but it's a useful tier 2 uh, unit uh, by all means and it's a reliable source of aligning. Cosmic Reprisal is one of the reasons why you want to be aligned, because that prediction just deals damage to five people who are not aligned. So this is one thing that you can use when you have a lot of alignment going on in your army, and with Astral Balance, a transformation, you make that more reliably happening, because every turn your units will have a chance to get aligned per se. Pretty powerful thing. And Divining Governance is a wonderful city spell, which increases your city stability because you know you can foresee the future pretty uh, nifty explanation and it also gives you the opportunity to transform knowledge into city stability an entirely new mechanic that i really really like to see it's pretty innovative that's why i like it the astral observatory pro uh, province improvement is finally juicing up the output of mountain tiles which i really really like because without that mod mountain tiles are actually quite unattractive and triumph foretold is some support skill that i highly recommend if you rock this tome because one hex radius alignment this alone is really powerful and the triumph prediction is amazing it's 30 percent more damage morale and haste so you get a lot of bang for your buck there can only be used once per battle though so it's the perfect thing for pumping up your troops before the battle really starts the tome of astrology is hard to use because you have to work with lots of time delayed things but i personally think this thing gives you such an edge in the alpha strike momentum of every fight because after two turns means usually the first clashing of the lines on the battlefield and that's why I find this tome really interesting and well tailored because you can get a lot of uh, stuff out of that but you have to use your brain otherwise it will be not too impressive at all. Now next step the tome of hunger. It's a chaos tome and it introduces the hunger mechanic. So hunger sounds bad but it's actually a good thing. It's a stackable thing which gives you physical damage and lifesteal. To make things a little bit more balanced, 
People who get only one whack get a powered up version of that, while multi attackers get a. In a grand total, they can utilize it a tad bit better. 50%, it's a little bit more than a tad bit, but you get me. And here we have at least a way that it is not super bad for shock units, for example. I like that. So, the spells inside here, well, we have Tenderizing Blast, which is a frontline spell, which is damage for the enemy and buffs for your own people surrounding the target. So it's one of those very interesting uh, things that is actually best used when the enemy frontline is already engaged with your people, because you get a lot of hunger stacks for that. The thing is, one hunger stack isn't too impressive. Three hunger stacks are already three damage and three lifesteal per freaking blow or six if it's a single target uh, hit, and this is a massive damage steroid over the course of the time. You get access to the Butcher Ogre, a very interesting fighter unit. The Butcher's Cut skill has a chance to insta-kill enemies, but this is, I think, not the most interesting part. I want to pin point out how good the melee strike of these guys is because they can inflict bleeding, which is a pretty powerful damage over time, so their average damage is pretty high for a tier 2 fighter unit. And if you get the Butcher's Cut pull, pulled off, well, they are even quite beefy. Scent of Flesh allows you to summon a unit out of a fallen unit. This is always really good. It's a Berserking throwaway unit, so you can also put it up behind enemy lines, and it comes with a lot of nice hunger stacks, so it can totally whack the enemy. And if it survives its first Berserkitis, it can munch itself up and stay relevant. I love this spell. This is a pretty powerful combat summon spell. Insatiable Hunger is a race transformation, giving us a chance to generate hunger stacks and a little bit more of HP. Well, pretty powerful stuff all in a nutshell. And the Revenous Mark gives our a, a very certain type of units here the chance to gain hunger whenever somebody dies. It's animals, giants, demigiants, fiends, and undead. And this tome, therefore, really synergizes well when you're going for necromancy, demon summoning, and all those wonderful things. Or even a beast master build. This is highly synergistic with many, many things. And meat on the menu lets you to... gains you the ability to destroy a random unit and heal everybody else in your army. It's a map spell. It's pretty powerful, but since it is only killing a random tier 1 unit, you can pretty well aim it to dispose your unwanted low tier unit. It's pretty cool, because I made the experience that in the later stages of the game, I end up with a lot of unwanted units. The Great Cauldron allows you to get transform your draft into food. Also, your units regenerate better on it. It's a pretty nifty thing. And the emergency rations gives your guys a cheap support skill that is another throwaway summon. Really powerful in this regard. So, we hop on over to the next tier 1 tome, which is going to be the Tome of the Tides. So, this one is very, very much around the wet condition. So wetness is something that the vanilla game doesn't utilize too much. It lowers your lightning and frost resistance and is therefore highly synergistic with the evocation tome out of the astral tree or cryomancy out of the shadow tree. So this one is really, really interesting if you are into one of those directions. It also gives some fire resistance, but that's actually fairly neglectable. So the Lesser Tide Spirit is for one, again, a evolving unit, which is uh, turning into a pretty nifty tier three unit one day, but it is mostly there to just give you a, a wetening melee attack and to stand in the way. It's a fairly disposable and cheap unit and yeah, it does what it does for a pretty cheap price, and therefore it's pretty okay. The Hydra Bomb is a one hex wide, low damage, wet bomb. The most interesting thing here is that it pushes enemies away. So you have kind of a displacement tool, which at the same time applies the de wet debuff. The Cold Mist is, on the other hand, a follow-up against wet enemies because it has a chance to freeze people who are already wetened and it releases some patches of mist that inflict wetness even more. So, Tsunami is the army spell version of all the stuff that we pull off. Quite a nice amount of physical damage and wetens the entire enemy enemy. 
It deals, that's the really interesting part, a lot of damage though when you're next to a coastal you know, uh, part. So it is situational, but it can really deal massive amounts of damage. 40 points are quite a lot. Tight callers are your go to tier two pole arm units that you can summon with or recruit with this book. Pretty nifty because they can push away units with the tight call. Yeah, I see them really as a very, very powerful backline defender where you can just push away units that want to get into your battle mages slash archers and I really like that. Flow style is a unit enchantment for battle mages and supporters, which is for one inflicting uh, wetness on your battle mages and supporters but the most interesting part is the fact that they are slippery from that point on that means if they ever get engaged they can just move one grid away and do not provoke an opportunity attack this is stupidly powerful this book is therefore really really interesting for any battle mage uh, culture that goes into frost or lightning damage and yeah i like that springs up options for things that weren't powerful enough already tide mill is one province improvement which lets you utilize coastal provinces which i really really appreciate and the tide caller thing well you can't have that for your uh, hero as well i just want to point out that the hero gets a massively upgraded version of that lots of damage four hex cone so this is a really really big one all right so let's get over to the last tier one tome and then we talk about the tier twos tome of witchcraft so this one is about status resistance lowering you know we are weakening the enemy's status resistance with a new status called jinx and well let's get into the things it's really diverse and i love it secret mixture is a interesting spell single target buff regen is always a happy thing that's 12 hp per turn and two random buffs you don't know what you get but uh, two random buffs can be massively powerful it's only single target so well it's a mixed pill but i like it because of that because it can be stupidly powerful the witch is your battle major that you can recruit with this book she has the ability to jinx people with her basic attack so witches can with that uh, jinxing thing stack up to five debuffs of status resistance this is really powerful if you are aiming on poisoning freezing burning electrifying all those wonderful things a cursed link is, gives the witch the ability to redirect damage from her to another friendly unit so if you have super beefy units you can put it on them because you should keep into a take into account that the damage gets amplified so it comes at a price but at the same time wow you can make your battle mages quite uh, resilient with that and they get the ability to summon a throwaway unit it's only a tier one animal unit out of the familiar pool but yeah throwaway units i love them evil eye is a single target damage spell which is well pretty powerful because the debuffs are really really massive but it's only single target, so it's not overpowered at all. But it's a really nice thing that you can just put up against somebody who you really want to get rid of in the early game fights. Greater Hex allows you to jinx entire armies. This is really cool because there's a lot of different army spells that you can rack up with this one together. So you can really shave down the status resistance with that one. Poison Magic gives your battle mages and supporters the ability to hit a little bit harder and the chance to inflict poisoning. So you get a little bit of damage over time into that build as well. And Occult Accord is 20% more damage for your entire race, but you suffer a loss of status resistance yourself i really like this one it's basically like a better version of spawnkin because spawnkin does the same thing without any downsides which is totally unfair and uh, perhaps yeah well perhaps we'll see a better balanced version of spawnkin if something like that is possible here so we can build a witch coven with that one yeah stupid tooltip and um yeah food and knowledge doesn't get powered up by adjacent provinces but it grants 
buffs to visiting armies. But, you know, I really always liked the ability to just build a research post in any city, even if it doesn't have any magical resources and therefore which covens are really, really nice to have. And also, your hero gains the ability to have different sorts of familiars, which will give you a free unit at the beginning of a fight. No activation needed. So let's get on over to the tier two tomes. We have fairy stuff going on. We have the Tome of the Seelie and the Tome of the Unseelie, which are basically good fairies and evil fairies. So let's get started with a good fairy sign. The Tome of the Seelie allows you to summon two fairy types, which are both supporters. The semi fairy comes with blooming life, which is a one hex radius heal, regen, and status purge tool. Very high cooldown, so use it wisely, but it can really be so good to punch an entire banner out of freeze or something like that. This is just the right antidote. The damage is pretty decent. It's a tier 3 unit, so you can get a lot of bang for your buck. And also remember, they are flying. Repositioning these units is really easy. The Spring Fairy comes with Poison Flavor. She also can inflict damage over time, and she buffs up a unit cluster with 20% damage and true strike which allows you to never miss. Pretty interesting for your ranged backline and also worth noting that this one has only a cooldown of one turn so you can really use that one way more often. So you have a healer and you have a regular supporter with these two units and I really like that already but it gets better from here. Melody of Youth gives you a army spell that applies haste and strengthening. So it's 20% more damage at the beginning of the fight, but being hastened at the beginning of the fight can be really interesting because this allows you to be very, very flexible at the beginning of the fight. You can move very far and, well, it might be situational, but alone the 20% damage buff are something worth noting. Trickster Magic allows you a battle mages and supporters to apply blindness on auto attacks and I, I love battle mage and supporter enchantments in general and this one is just a nice piece of utility. Blindness cancels retaliation attacks so it's super powerful against ranged units and polearm units. Seelie Blessing, single, uh, a, not single, a Battle spell that gives a one hex wide regen and status protection thing. This is a pretty new thing for me. It's two stacks, uh, two points of status resistance per stack. So four points of status resistance. This is massive. So you can really, really protect yourselves against uh, poisonous and damage over time stuff and debuffs with that spell really, really well. Apply that on high tier units and you are really, really in the clear against most things because high tier units have a pretty high natural status protection by themselves. Else. Fairy Fires is a one hex radius burst with com which comes with the blind flavor. Pretty good stuff. Pretty, pretty good stuff. You also get to build the Seelie Nest, which powers up forests and grasslands for more mana. I love everything that gives more mana, more food, not too bad either. And it also co counts as conduit. Same thing, like I said before, provinces that can be built as a conduit or a research post without needing a magical resource are always a blessing to have. The Tome of the Unseelie goes now more into the, well, more aggressive variant, I'd say. We have two Battle Mage units, the Winter Fairy and the Autumn Fairy. The Winter Fairy comes with a Hindering Blizzard spell, which is an AoE nuke that really comes in with a nice amount of damage, high range, and inflicts slowing. So it takes up the entire action of the Fairy, but it is so powerful because you are able to AoE nuke pretty pretty heavily it's a tier 3 unit after all and the frost bolts that come with any application of statuses but they can be enchanted with all those battle mage uh, unit enchantments so we can work on that the autumn fairy comes with a aoe nuke for blind same same ground uh, same framework as the winter fairy but her basic attacks yeah no, they can, they have the same issue like hers but these two units give you a massive battle mage backbone that you can just summon via mana. Lament of Aging is an enemy battle spell that is pretty much the exact opposite of what we had in the Seelie Tome. It slows the enemy instead of hastening them and weakens them instead of strengthening them. So really good stuff. I really like that one because this plays extremely well into, top, into dark culture and slowing the enemy always comes with the benefit of being more being able to take more initiative on the enemy pranks the magic battle mages and supporters apply weakening 
again, very, very synergistic with the dark culture because they love everything that does inflict weakening. Unsee liqueurs, one hex radius decay and status vulnerability. So the exact opposite again. This tome is really meant to be a mirrored version of the other one because that's just how Seely and Unseely work according to mythology. And this spell here, well, decaying. It counters out healing. This is insanely powerful. So you either cleanse that away or you have to live with the fact that no more virtual HP anymore. So this is really, really good and powerful on its own against all the support heavy builds because you can't spit that out every turn as long as you have combat magic. Rust Lightning is just your regular one hex radius blast spell, 20 points of damage, nothing you can modify there but it's a very very high synergy again with Witness for example. Just wanted to point that out, that Witness is Lightning and Frost um, susceptibility. Now then, you get the Unseely Nest, you might have already guessed it, it's very similar to the Seely Nest. It is Mana Knowledge, it's a conduit, and it gets buffed by forests and snow territory. So this tome even has a bit of a synergy with Cryomancy builds. Devious Tactics, oh, I forgot the other one. I'll go over that in a hot minute, I'm very sorry. Devious Tactics is a damage buff for units that are suffering from negative status effects 20 percent and it's so easy to apply that massively powerful and i i totally forgot that one i'm very sorry so tome of the Seely, playful tactics your units deal massively more damage when they are at full health i love this because it is you know you have to pull it off but you have a stupidly high alpha burst. I don't know if these are well balanced, especially the Tomb of the Seely and Unseely feel a little bit powerful, but at the end of the day, you know, this um, is all about your own decision if you want to play with them or not. I personally like what is in this mod so far. Like I always like to say, every piece of modding that you put into games like these enables the power creep momentum but it's a lot of fun it's very very well made the artwork is good and all in all i enjoyed my time with this one a lot so i'll do a part two as soon as there are enough new tomes popping up i hope you enjoyed this one thanks for watching this video leave me a comment down below if you have anything on your mind i'd appreciate a thumbs up or a subscription a lot there is also a playlist link down there leading to all the other Age of Wonders 4 info videos I did. Knock yourself out if you want to check out more of the stuff that I did. And a big, big thanks to the supporters of this channel. I truly appreciate what you all are doing and enabling me to do the work we all love. And therefore, check out Patreon, Paypal, and buy me a coffee. I'd be delighted if you did. And if you don't, or if you can't, don't mind at all. I'm really appreciating having you around here. That's the biggest thing that you can do for me. So have a wonderful day and see you soon.